be like a the front office worker for the hell of a Here. You can set it on top of my <laughs> Coach, I've uh, passed out the press release and kind of briefed everybody on what cool. we're trying to do. So if you want to maybe start by elaborating on the concept of the Friday Night Lights and then uh, open it up for questions. All right. And then we can just take questions on any topic related to football. All right. Coming, you know, this thing's the first step. Then, you um, you know, they've been used to and, you know, everybody's bought in and everybody has worked hard and um, we're going to keep pushing them. But the next step after winter conditioning is obviously spring ball. We put on pads and, you know, that's what uh, they've came here to do is play football. So we get to do that. Uh, we're excited about that. Uh, we're excited about a few things that we've wanted to do. Friday Night Lights is something that uh, I've always thought would be a cool idea here in Southern Illinois, you know, is really taking the team to the people of Southern Illinois. So um, our first scrimmage will be at Duquoin High School on April 1st uh, at 6 o'clock. Uh, obviously, that's where I'm from. It's my, um, you know, we can load the bus, we can get off and, and get warmed up. And, and it's uh, anytime you can have change and get them out of their comfort zone, uh, that's what we're looking to do. That's what we got to get better at. And so uh, we're excited about that. And um, so with that, if anybody has any questions about Friday Night Lights or um, anything about spring ball, shoot them away. So you can only have three official scrimmages. That's right. Yeah. yeah although you can scrimmage in the practice. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, the the rule is uh, with um, you know so much of your per, the percentage of your practice eleven and on eleven full scrimmage you can only have three of those, or the majority of your practices you know competing against each other. So you can always have live segments against each other in each practice, but a full out scrimmage, you can have three. So we'll have April 1st at Indu Coin. Uh, we'll practice April 8th, Friday night at six o'clock here at Saluki Stadium. And then uh, April 15th will be a night practice, but we won't scrimmage. And then we'll save that third scrimmage for the spring game, which will be Saturday, April 23rd at two o'clock. Uh, that'll just kind of, you know, when somebody proves that that's their job, you know, I kind of go back to last year. Um, we didn't really name Mark the starter until fall camp. You know, uh, Mark didn't even take the last drive of spring practice last year. Sam Straub did, you know, when we end the spring game, um, they competed through the summer and, and then Mark, you know, it pushed Mark to be better and he came out, had a good year. So. We've got a lot of good quarterbacks, you know, four guys that really realistically have a shot to win it and um, and compete. And they, they've done everything that uh, um, this offseason that's expected of them. I like all of them. I really do. And it's they had great mentors last year for the guys that were here. Even the one that didn't play, Matt McIntosh, as you see what um, a good quarterback room looks like, you know, supporting each other, competing against each other. You want each other's jobs, but we're going to be men about it. We're going to help each other out in the film room, and then, you know, the best player will play. How, how helpful is it to have three veteran wide receivers possibly back next year for these new quarterbacks? Yeah, and I would say we almost have more than more than three. You know, I'm excited about our receivers. I feel like we we have as good as receivers. Uh, as anybody in the country, really. Uh, everybody that played is coming back, you know, our top five guys. And Connor Awima, we felt like um, through fall camp and last spring was m maybe the best. And he really didn't even get off to get started last season. Uh, he started the first, whatever, three or four games, then he, then he tore his shoulder up. He's back, but uh, we're excited about seeing what Connor can do. Jimmy Jones, I would say he's got a full season of starting under him. He's only going to be a sophomore. Uh, Darrell James is another one that got a lot of experience to take that next step. But then you've, you've obviously got Izzy and, and uh, you know Billy Reed, and so the receiver room is deep as well. So you may, you may not, uh, you may redshirt all your uh, freshman receivers, or, or is that the uh, three star or whatever it was uh, wide receiver you got from Florida? Will he play or will he redshirt? Uh, I mean, I, anybody can come in here and play. I mean, if they're good enough, we'll, we'll put the, the best players out there. We're into winning. And, uh, you know, I feel like now more so than ever, you saw with Daquan Isom, so many of these high schools run the same schemes 
as we do. I mean, if you can go out there and uh, compete and prove that you can play, then we'll play you. So they'll get that opportunity. We got to, you know, we signed four wide receivers and um, they'll get a chance to come in and camp. That's one thing that, uh, you know, you've got to be careful with is during spring is we play fast. We get a lot of reps in a short amount of time. So sometimes our practices might be shorter than, than normal is because we have seven receivers really going to compete in spring. So if we've got three receivers out there, two groups, really we're too deep. So in fall camp, we can be, we can practice longer. They'll get a shot because we've got four guys coming in uh, with another walk on. So five guys will be added to that um, receiver's room. So this spring, we got to be careful. We do have some older receivers, you know, so how many reps they're going to get. We're not going to run them into the ground. Um, so. Uh, that's something that we'll have to watch and monitor as we go through the spring. Will, uh, will Brett Shirts be <clears throat> announced um, before the end of the last practice, or do you have any timeline for when that will happen? That won't. That really won't be until fall camp till those guys get here. You know, so um, they've all been told in recruiting they'll have a shot to compete, and we 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 mean that. Um, you know, last year our starting running back Daquan Isom came in. He wasn't told he'd start, but he earned the job and and played as a true freshman. So, I mean, if you're good enough, you'll play. Do you have, do you have any early enrollees who are prior to getting No, no, no freshmen that, that were early enrollees, just uh, just the mid-year transfers. Will all those guys be here for spring ball? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the it, it, the yeah, except the Devin Brunetti, the center, the um, junior college center will, will come in summer school. So uh, he's still got to get his AA degree finishing up at junior college this spring. So uh, he's the only one. But the other ones transferring from the uh, 1A schools are, are all here. Quarterback is Sam Straub going to start as the number one, or are you going to have them all even? When you start? They'll, all get, they, they'll all get equal reps with the ones, uh, which it's tough to, you know, when you got four guys, a lot of, re you know, enough reps to go around. So that's our job as coaches to figure out, you know, there might be a day one guy gets more reps than the other. It's not right away because he's playing better. We want to see them all get equal time with the starting line, the starting receivers, all that kind of stuff, give them a chance to uh, perform well. Will your offensive scheme be quite similar to last year's or there'll be some tweaking? The, there's always tweaking. I don't think that uh, um, you know you can just be the same. I mean, there's a lot of good defensive coordinators in our league and around. They got time to study. That's why you see teams change all the time. So we'll tweak it, and you know we don't have the same quarterback. So you gotta you gotta. Is that that would be part of? It, yeah, that'll be part of it exactly. We probably ran our quarterback more than anybody in the country last year. We want to get the emphasis in the springtime is to. Um, you know, line up and run the football because you got to you got to be able to run it to, to win a championship. We feel so uh, it's a good mix, and uh, um, so well, it's the same philosophy. You know, get your playmakers the ball. We're still going to play up tempo, uh, be simple, and uh, just play fast, play hard. So uh, whatever, whoever plays quarterback, though, will then kind of dictate, you know, what your offense really looks like. I don't want to use the word pressure, but is there any added maybe? Incentive or, or extra credence given to uh, Strong as a fifth-year st transfer for him to start? Uh, well, if you ask him, he's a competitive kid. He came here to start. You know, he transferred in here. He's used to starting. He started for three years at a Division two school. So, I mean, he came here uh, to play, and he'll get that opportunity. But so will you know everybody else in that room. So that's what's the best. I mean. I tell him when I recruit him, I told him that when I recruited him, if you think you're coming here and you're going to have one handed to you, you know, you probably should pick some of those other schools that offered you. Uh, he wanted to come here and play in this offense and play um, here because it's a great place. And uh, he's a good quarterback. Um, I've never seen him throwing, you know, out on the field either. So I'm looking forward to Monday getting out there, getting our hands on him and, and slinging it around a little bit. And, and uh, but he's a great kid. You can tell why he is uh, who he is, and you know he's done a good job, and he's already started to become a leader. And really, all of our guys have done a good job in that room. You've had your guys out volunteering a lot in the community with the Super Bowl and all that. Just how important was it for you to make sure that in the beginning of your tenure, just to reach out and make sure that you're still a part of the community? Um, 
really it, re it really isn't just the beginning you know that's just who we're going to be here uh we're always going to be out there i mean even this saturday um a lot of our guys are gone on spring break but we got a community service thing this saturday uh with the vine church and um we're always going to be like that you know that was one of the emphasis whenever i got the job i mean th that's what's going to bring this uh excitement that's what's going to get people to know our players without their helmet on so we're always going to be out in the community all the time it's not something that hey the first semester hey the first few months we really got to get out there and act like we're going to do this all the time it's just it's it's genuine and uh you guys will figure that out over time that's just what we do and who we are so you got a pretty much a new staff what's your priorities when you start spring ball on monday uh, I was just I was just putting together the the PowerPoint for our team meeting on Sunday night. Effort and enthusiasm, you know, mental errors. That's the only thing we really will track. That's really what I care about. I mean, we're going to lead the country in effort out there. We're going to make mistakes. Probably going to make some wrong reads, all that kind of stuff. But if we're flying around and doing it as fast as we can, then I then we're going to be all right. It's going to be a good practice. And uh, so we got to have ton of effort. And, um, and then mentally, we've got to show improvement as far as taking the meeting time out to the field and, and being in position. I think that's the biggest thing on defense that I want to see is being in position. I mean, with offenses and everything, you're going to give up some yards. But the biggest, the biggest thing is, is don't give up explosive plays. Don't make it easy for the offense. You know, and now on the other side, as an offensive coordinator, I'm always telling our guys we got to come up with explosive plays. We got to get some easy ones. You know, so uh, we always talk about explosive plays and turnovers. If we can have the most explosive plays in the game, and we win the turnover battle, we'll win the game. And uh, really, I heard that from a longtime offensive coordinator. He went back and did some quality control, kind of on his own all the games that he ever plays said he's 80 and 0 when he wins those two stats. So that's what we, we focus on that. We, you know, as an offense, we want to generate some explosive plays and we can't turn it over. We turned it over too many times last year. We had a lot of explosive plays, but we lost the turnover battle too many times. So in springtime, you know, and then on defense, we need to take it away more. So, uh, you know, in spring practice, one side's wanting to take it away and one's trying to, trying to hold on to it. So. Were you able to expose the players to the new the new defensive plays already? Nate, or how much were you able to expose the guys? To the yeah, you time? you uh, within the rules, you get so many um, hours a week to meet, and uh, so they've seen it, you know, and they've had meetings with their coaches, um, but you know, out there on the field, running through it and all that kind of stuff, not yet. But yeah, they've been meeting with their coaches, the the terminology and and all of that, so. Coach Balson does a good job of uh, of teaching, and they'll keep it pretty simple, you know, early until everybody's on the same page, and then they'll gradually start, you know, putting in more. Just being a little, a little off topic of what you're talking about right now, but uh, just can you talk a little bit about the process of bringing Israel Landrack and Ben up for six years? Uh, Izzy was one of our best playmakers, you know, last season. It was ha it was nice to see that because he had kind of struggled, not you know, just to stay healthy. Uh, early in his career he's uh, since he stepped on campus you know knowing him whenever my brother played here he's always been a, a great athlete but uh he finally was able to put a good product out on the field and uh so we're it's not guaranteed that he's back um you know he can practice in the spring and we're just waiting on you know the ncaa to let us know the conference has cleared it but now just waiting on the ncaa so but we got time. I mean, he can practice in the springtime. He just can't, you know. Do the type of players, I don't know whether he'd be the one that would answer this, but the type of players that you have for a four-man line, will they change, as, like, for defensive ends? Would you get the same type of guy that you would get at, at, in a three-man line that you would a four-man line? No. I mean, bigger? Yeah. I mean, typically they're a little bit different, you know, especially your ends. In a three-four, they're they've got to be able to get back and cover, and drop into coverage and do all that kind of stuff. So they're more of an athletic, maybe weigh a little bit less, maybe more of a, a finesse or you know pass rusher type guy. In a four-three, you got You know you're going to put four guys down there that can put their hand in the ground and can stop the run and hopefully generate a pass rush with four guys. Um, so yeah, they'll look a little bit different. You know we felt like that we have enough to make the switch now. 
Um, and then the way we recruited with our young guys, you know, a lot of those guys will fit good into a 4-3 scheme. So the guys you have on there now will pretty much be the guys you'll have in the fall. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, that's what I always said. I mean, we, we can't just go out there and flip the team. I mean, this core nucleus of guys out there in the spring ball, that's who we got to win with, you know, in the fall. So we got to get better. They got to learn the scheme. And uh, that's our job, too. We're not going to put somebody out there that's uh, – out of position, you know, if they can't put their hand down in a 4-3 scheme, then it's our job as coaches to come up with a scheme. So we might be a little bit multiple or it might be a 4-3 scheme, but he might stand up or, you know, until we get everybody in here that we need in and, here. And the same thing with linebackers. Instead of having two or four linebackers, you had three. Is that, is that, do they have the same responsibility outside linebackers as the ones in the no, it's a, I mean, it's a totally different scheme, you know, but we have the guys to play three linebackers. In fact, I think a couple guys will play a lot better, you know, out to the field, athletic, you know, Whitney Simon, Cody Kreider, two kids that didn't redshirt last year. They're going to fit right in out there playing out to the field, playing linebacker. And then, well, I mean, I, I'm not just, I feel like Chase Allen's the best linebacker in the country, and he can be. You know, he's a guy, ty type of kid that could be a first-team All-American, and we believe that. I mean, he he's as athletic as they come. Really, if we lined up and ran 40s, he's probably our fastest kid on our team. And uh, to weigh 250 pounds, run like that, he showed it. He's got film. Uh, and I think that he, he will even play better with those extra D linemen up in front of him, keeping those guys off of him. He's going to be able to run sideline to sideline, make more tackles. And uh, so we're excited about Chase. He's another one. We've got some older guys, seniors, that uh, they prove they can play. They got to get this system down. But that, you know, practice to practice, we'll figure out what's our best, uh, you know, how long we're going. We're not going to beat up Chase Allen in the spring. But, uh, you know, Chase is going to have a great year. But he will be a middle. Yeah, he'll play inside the box, yeah. How's TJ Buick coming along, Nick? Great, you know, we really, he's the one guy, if you ask him right now, he, he wishes he was full go on Monday. I mean, you gotta kind of hold him back and say, you know, wait till the doctor completely clears you. Uh, he wants to get in, he was trying to get in our conditioning test right before they left for break. So, I mean, he's ahead of schedule by a few weeks actually. So we'll be smart with him too. I mean, he's a fifth year guy. Uh, we wanna have him ready to roll come, you know, Florida Atlantic, not first day of spring ball. Not cleared to practice? Not yet. He will practice in the spring, but full go right off the bat. He won't be in live scrimmage sets, but he'll be out there even on Monday going through some individual drills and, and all that stuff. He looks pretty good. Coach, are there any uh, big change that we can expect as far as uh, disciplinary action? This team has had some issues with discipline in the past couple seasons. Anything that you're even telling the guys or even stressing to them? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you would ask the players that, I've already stressed that. You know, um, you know, our we don't have a rule book. Our our thing is be a man. So you know what what that is is we're going to act right. We're going to treat people right. And so far we haven't had one discipli disciplinary action all spring, all winter conditioning. And usually, you know, knock on wood, not saying you got 105 guys in a college setting. You know, we're trying to teach them how to be men, how to make right decisions. And uh, so we don't really have a bunch of rules. And it's just uh, they know what's right and what's wrong. And uh, as coaches, we're going to show them what that means. And uh, so, so far, everybody's bought in. And if, uh, if something comes up, then that's when we'll deal with that. But they know there's consequences. I mean, for missing class, um, you know, they've got to be in here at 455. If they miss a class, they're in their position group at 455 for an hour. Um, so we, we kind of squash that right off the bat. People are in class. And, um, you know, so there, there's rules, there's expectations, um, but they, they, it's just kind of um, the standard that we've set. We have a familiar quarterback coach here? Yeah, we're in the process of doing that. Hopefully uh, here, you know, soon we'll have somebody here. But, yeah, we're in the process of doing that. And, and I know you talked about the move earlier, but the Somer back to quarterback, what do you like about him? You know, um, in that role? Number one, that he wants to be a quarterback. You know, he he's down to to help us out whatever way he can. But uh, he's a winner. 
you know, and he won a state championship in high school. He's a quarterback, and he played corner the whole game, too. He never came off the field. I mean, as a freshman, we stuck him out there at Indiana to, punt, to, to be our punt returner. So we trusted him enough to catch the ball and make good decisions out there. So he's an athlete. He can throw it as good as, as any. He, he can throw the ball good enough to win in this league. Uh, he's not a, like a wildcat quarterback that you can't throw the ball. So we're going to give him that opportunity to, to, to just run the offense. And obviously, for, for him, when he's in there, we may do a little bit more of what you saw us do with Mark you know, whenever he's in in a scrimmage or something like that. Um, but he can, he can run the offense just like anybody else. So I'm excited about having him out there because he's a winner and he's a tough kid. And what's important to you when you evaluate the quarterback race? Uh, just leading our team, you know, it's kind of a, uh, you, won't, you always hear like, they don't want to get labeled like a game manager. I want to see somebody that does that. that. To me, that's a compliment, you know. We got to be able to take care of the ball, number one. They got to be able to just get us in the right place. So many of our, uh, it, so much of our stuff is put on the, the quarterback to kind of get us in and out of good make good decisions you know and uh ultimately they got to make plays too and they got to you know um uh, make the throws but they got to lead us up and down the field in game situations so a lot of people can go out there and look good in shorts and a t-shirt you know monday is not going to really tell us a lot about who our quarterback is it's going to be the first step but when you know you're not getting hit and you're back there in pass kelly and you're throwing one-on-ones i've seen a lot of good quarterbacks with shorts and a t-shirt on you got to put pads on. We got to, you know, we'll probably go live again on them in the springtime. I was always big on that. You know, we could, we would have never known what Mark Iannotti was unless we would hit him. You know, if you just blew the whistle when you went by, I mean, Mark was a physical kid. And that's part about being a quarterback. I want to see who can get hit and get hit hard and then get back in and then play the next play. That's part about being a quarterback. Will uh, everybody, in, uh, even a freshman, be in the mix for tight end? That was the freshman that you recruited. Yeah, I mean, that's a, you know, we've got, we're young at tight end. Both of the, um, uh, even, you know, Hunter Cooper, uh, that's from Nashville, uh, will we'll get a lot of playing time. Jake Barble, uh, another, you know, local kid uh, that we're excited about all of our young tight ends. And really, when you look back, the history of, of tight ends at SIU, uh, the good ones always played when they were younger. You know, Ryan Kearns played as a true freshman. Um, you know, caught a touchdown pass at Indiana in like the second game, and then went on to start for four years. Mike Cole started as a freshman, started for four years. You know, Adam Feeney played as a freshman, played for four years. So we've got to get a couple young guys ready to go. And, uh, you know, one of those guys can be, you know, one when of the you, next good when players. You say that you're pretty well set at offensive line, or you probably wouldn't bring anybody in in the summer, or it depends. Yeah, it just always depends. We're always looking for players. I mean, recruiting never stops, you know, if the right player comes in. You're always trying to build your offensive line, but we, uh, we're we excited about the younger guys that we have, you know. We'll, uh, we'll find five to put out there and have a good line. Do you feel like the energy that the guys have brought this offseason is just because of the new staff, or do you feel like they actually connect more with the younger staff that you brought in? Uh, hopefully both, you know. But like I said, I mean, we're not going to win any games by just the first couple months because it's new and then it wears off and then it's the same old. So that's what I tell them all the time. I mean, it's the same thing. It's a it's a process of uh, we're we've got to have enthusiasm for as long as I'm going to be here. You know, it's just not something that we're going to do here for a couple months and then it's going to wear off. So uh, we're always out there doing things with them. You know, um, community service. They see their position coach right there with them. I mean, we've been out here. We've ran around the lake our morning runs. We've, you know, put on the running shoes and ran around that lake with them. You know, we've done it all with them. Um, and, you know, we played them in a five-on-five -five basketball game one of the last week of uh, winter conditioning, and we beat them. So, uh, so that it's uh, – we're always going to do things together. It's not fake, you know. We always talk about genuine really loving our players. And uh, I feel like, you know, our staff has done an awesome job of – showing them that it's not fake, it's not just a one-time thing, but that's just who we are, and that's the kind of guys that I've hired because um, it ultimately starts with the staff. Did you give them a little bit of a break since you're an All-State basketball player? No, I, you know, we've got some good basketball players, Jimmy Jones, Billy Reed, 
uh, I told Billy, it was at the end of conditioning, I told Billy to pick his top five guys on the team who he thought was a good basketball player because they're always over there playing intramurals and stuff like that. And he picked five guys. And I had told five of the coaches, we always play noon ball so, uh, to, to wear their basketball shoes. And we, we had a quick game to seven by ones and twos, and we beat them seven to six. So uh, it, was, uh, it was fun. But all those type of things, I mean, those are the things that we're going to remember, you know, um, and you know brings you together as a family, and and those are you know the things that we're always going to do around here. Any uh, major changes? Who hit the game winner? Yeah, I, I hit the game winner in the corner. I think Billy was guarding me too. If you guys ever want to ask him about that. Coach, talk about building a community with the team. Um, of course, this Friday night lights thing is, is stepping that direction. Community service stepping that direction. How important is it to get Southern Illinois fired up and packing uh, Saluki Stadium for home games? I, I mean it's. It's part of if we're going to win or lose, you know. I mean, anywhere you go in our in our league, you're the best teams that win championships. If you look around FCS football, they have a home field advantage, and we've got to create that at SIU. You know, we've been talking about it for a long time, uh, but uh, we've got to we've got to create one. We've got to ultimately win, and people want to come out here and watch a winner. And we got to make it fun for them to come out. But winning's fun. Uh, but I want Southern Illinois to know that. This is their team, just as much as it is mine or any of these coaches. And I, that's what I want the players out there in the community. If I meet you and I'm polite to you in Kroger, you know, or whatever, then he might, that, that person they met, they might come to a game then, you know, or if I'm out at a community service event and, you know, meet 20 people that's never been to a game, but they're like, hey, that was a polite young man. And, you know, I like what they're doing in the community. I'm going to go out there and support them. You know, we can't expect anything to change unless we change a little bit. And so um, that's what we're going to do. You know, I speak all over Southern Illinois, and I've made that clear that I'll go anywhere and speak and, and uh, you know, just let them know that we're really trying to um, take on the personality of this region. You know, it's how it was whenever I was here with Coach Kill, Tard Hat, Lunch Pell. And on April 29th, we're going to uh, Nighthawk Coal. And we're going to take some of the players and the coaching staff, and we're going to go out there. We're going to meet some coal miners. And the ones that want to go underground, we're going underground. We're going to kind of see what it's like to be a, you know, a coal miner. And so that we always talk about it. But let's go out, you know what I mean? Like, we've got to go in there. we got to meet the people of Southern Illinois. And from being here, uh, being from here, I kind of understand that. And I want them to know that we respect that. And, uh, you know, when we do that, I think they'll come out and support us. Is there a minimum? No, there's no minimum. You know, we uh, we have we have different things that uh, we're divided up in the off season into teams. So there's all of our leaders, team leaders have you know guys that are on their team. They get uh, you know community service points and all that kind of stuff. And then we have a you know that winning team at the end. Good, you know, grades and community service is how you earn the most points. But like I told them all the time, we also None of us got points for going and, and cleaning up Carbondale that day. It's just, hey, we're not doing this because we get a reward at the end. You know, uh, I tell them that too. I mean, we've we've been out there. You know, you go out there and there's three or four thousand people in the stands. Don't complain unless we did something about it in the off season to get some people there too. You know what I mean? And that's how we're going to get people there. I've always said that. That's how we're going to get it. You know, is going to Carterville, going all over south of 64. They got to know who Chase Allen is. You know, they got to know who Daquan Isom is. They got to know our players. They got to know. I mean, Reed Silby, um, who's the starting offensive lineman, he hasn't missed one community service thing that you can sign up for. And so, I mean, he's done an amazing job. And and that's just the culture that we're going to build here. And uh, I always say that. I mean, if we if we build it good enough, the people will come. And uh, you know, we have a great home schedule. And I, I really, I really think that we can sell out some games this year. You know, there's only been one sellout in Saluki Stadium history. That was the first game, and uh, it's an awesome stadium. It really is. We have one of the best venues in, in FCS football. It's awesome. Uh, you know, a, a night game in September, awesome weather. We got to make it an event. We got to hold up our part of it and win games. Um, but it's going to be an exciting time to come out there and. Uh, you know, I want to sell out games. And, and if we do that, they're going to help us win more games, too. Who's on your leadership council next? 
Uh, there's there's ten of them, and actually, it was voted on before they came back, uh, and then we're going to re-vote here this week too. So um, there's ten guys. Usually it's old it's older guys. You know the seniors. You know the Chase, Billy, T.J. Beelan, Jimmy Jones. Um, those guys are are all on there. Leonard Garen, and um, but you know. One thing that I'm going to change is is we're going to put some younger players on there because they need to start learning how to be leaders from the older guys. So when those guys leave, it's just you know transitions right up the the line. Are there any logistical challenges for the scrimmage at the high school? I know they have a pretty nice facility, but training table and stuff like that. What yeah, we'll we'll since it's so close, we will um, we'll do all the taping and everything here. So when we get on the bus we'll be ready to roll whenever we get off the bus. There'll be a few things that, you know, we'll get out there. Uh, but um, it's a it's an awesome facility that they have at DuCoin. So the turf and um, room for us to, to get off there and get going and and stretch and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, the, the only, there's not gonna be, you know, there's no um, gate. There's no, it's, it's free to come. There won't be a concession stand. It'll be pretty quick. It'll be, you know, we'll go 100 plays or 115 plays, a normal, you know, scrimmage, but those, you know, take an hour or so. And then uh, it'll be a fun time to let, you know, kids come out on the field afterwards and get, a you know, an autograph and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, really, we're, we're really looking forward to it. It'll be a fun day. How much, how much different is it? Last year you were offensive coordinator and – well, at least co-offensive coordinator to the head coach than, than, than it is now to be the head coach and have an offensive coordinator. Do you, have you seen any differences in your philosophies that, or the stuff that might help you with a new guy? Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, saying your question is different, you know, it's different because I've got to be a head coach. You know, I try to send on as many defensive meetings as I can Practice will be a little bit different. I'll be learning on the go too. I mean, this is first practice as a head coach in college. So, uh, you know, that's why I wanted to hire a good offensive coordinator. And John Van Dam's done an awesome job in the uh, the off season, just organizing everything, meeting. Sometimes I got to be in and out, and uh, he does a great job. He he'll script practice, and then you know I'll be there. But he'll call a lot of the spring. You know, I want to I want him to get a feel for the way that I want it to look. You know, and if he had to call the plays, he could call the plays. You know, so several, probably the first scrimmage, he'll do that. Like I've said before, I got to be able to be over there on the defense and I got to celebrate with Ryan Neal when we get a pick. You know, yeah. it can't just be, I'm always trying to, I'm celebrating with the offense when we make the D look bad, you know, and I'm their head coach. So sometimes as a head coach, you got to step back and you just got to evaluate it all. And that's why I have two good, you know, coordinators on offense and defense. Just the the guys that you ask about, T.J. Beeling, Beelan, um, Cody Kreider will be transitioning into uh, Nate Sylvester, the guys that had surgery. But uh, we had a good off season as far as there's not any new injuries. Uh, just the guys that are recovering from the end of last year. Anything else for Coach Hill? Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Doing good.